everyone and a very good morning to all of you let me start by sharing a small incident with you so what happened is a few days ago i was asked to get some things from the grocery store so as expected i dressed up and took the money and went off straight to the grocery store only to realize that i had forgot my face mask yes then i had to travel all the way back to the home and get a face mask and go to the grocery store again now this wasn't the first time that happened to me unfortunately uh, previously as well i used to step out of the house only to realize that oh i'm not wearing a mask and i'm pretty sure that i'm not the only one suffering from this problem many of you as well are facing this problem and so that day i decided that it enough is enough Uh, because I was not only putting my life in danger without going um, without wearing a face mask, but I was also endangering other people's life, and that's when I decided to build a device that will remind me to wear a face mask whenever I'm about to go outside. So, without further ado, let's begin. So. Let's talk about a little about the assembly. So assembly is basically a smart lab that was based in that is based in N5 in December 2014 and over the course of over 6 years we have delivered around 250 free workshops and these workshops are divided into three basic categories. So hack, code and data science. So the assembly the workshops that uh, deal with embedded systems iot's or hardware like today's workshops which we use for hardware which we are using i mean which we'll use hardware for are categorized as hack and secondly we have workshops which are called categorized as code which include software projects gaming any projects including apis etc etc those come under the category of code lastly we have data science category which involves which or includes all uh workshops that are related to artificial intelligence machine learning big data etc etc our target audiences are students professionals and entrepreneurs but anyone who is interested in our workshop is more than in welcome to join us we focus on smart technology and practical applications so an example would be the workshop that we are doing today so it's based on a real life problem and a real life situation to combat that problem You can know more about us at our forum, which is members.theassembly.ae, and don't forget to tag us on our social media. Tag us on Facebook and Twitter at Make Smart Things, and also like our also you can also visit our YouTube channel, which is The Assembly. Let's get into a bit of detail onto how this setup works. So this is quite similar to the workshop we did previously using the PIR sensors. So we'll again be using a PIR sensor for those of you who don't know what a PIR sensor is. Py PIR stands for pyroelectric or uh, passive infrared sensor, and this de basically detects the change in or the infrared radiation. Because every object gives away little or less, I mean, varying amount of infrared. But the hotter the object, the more infrared radiation it gives out, and we as humans uh, emit a large amount of radi ir radiation cause we are our body temperature is around 37 degrees so the principle that we'll uh, build on our project on today is the fact that we'll place our device somewhere close to the door so whenever a person is about to step out of the house this device will detect the pir sensor in fact will detect that a change in the ir uh, infrared and based on that it will uh, what you call play a buzzer or we can do play pretty much anything we can light up things or so basically for today we'll sound an alarm so that you know that we have to wear a face mask while going outside so this is how it will work we'll also have something to keep a count of how many face masks we have so we'll not only build something that reminds us you can we'll also build something which stores the mask as well so you don't need to go back i mean if you if you have already wore wore your shoes like i do because when i'm stepping outside the house i can't take the shoes back into the, my house so 
So, to avoid that problem we have a container, we will have a container which will keep the track of how many face masks are there inside it and we can use that also to our advantage so that we can know when our face masks are going to end and we can refill them. So, the parts list is pretty simple, we will need an Arduino Uno, buzzer, PIR sensor of course, LCD display, we will need an LCD display to show us the amount of I mean let us say uh, amount of masks that are remaining or things like that and of course we need a keypad if we are using that because uh, for in order for us to input the number of total masks and things like that and then if you want if you want you can connect it to a 9 volt battery or you can have it connected to a laptop that is up to you and this is the wiring diagram for the project. So, we will go ahead and wire this using the exact same diagram. So, you can take a screenshot of it or else the link is there in the description below. You can download all the code and the wiring diagram from the description and link in the description below. So, without further ado, let us get started uh, so that we do not, we no longer forget to wear our face mask which is quite embarrassing. Alright, so let us start the wiring. So, as you can see on your screen the wiring diagram is there if it is unclear or I think part of it is missing. So, you can use the link in the description below to download all the codes as well as the wiring diagram. So, that is that and so let us look at the parts that we will be using here. So, we will be using Arduino Uno board of course and I put an showmeter to use with the LCD display a 16 by 2 LCD display, a buzzer, a PIR sensor and of course a lot of jumper cables. So yeah, this is pretty much it and we will also be using a resistor. So let us begin uh, with the wiring. So the wiring will be like so, this LCD display has 16 pins. So, we will only connect the first 6 and the last 6. So, these will be connected according to the diagram. So, the first VSS will be the first pin which is VSS the first pin from the left will be connected to the uh, VCC or the 5 volt input from the Arduino Uno. And I have used a breadboard to connect all of this. Uh, it is much better if you use a breadboard because the wiring gets really messy. And so, then the second pin VDD is connected to the ground. The third pin VO is connected to the middle pin of the potentiometer. And of course, the other two pins of the potentiometer go into the 5 volts and the ground. So, that is it for the potentiometer. And uh, the RS pin goes into uh, 5 volts, the R, uh, the RW pin uh, sorry the RS pin goes into digital pin 12 of the Arduino Uno board yes and the RW pin will be uh, given to VCC or 5 volts. So, then we have the enable pin which is E. So, that will be connected to digital pin 11 on the Arduino board and then coming from uh, the rightmost pin over here. So, the K pin will be connected to the uh, I mean the 5 volts. Then the A port which will be connected to uh, a resistor and that resistor will be connected to a ground. So, it will be connected to the ground but via a resistor. And then these other pins which are D7, D7 is connected to uh, digital pin uh, 10 and D6 is connected to digital pin 13, D5 and D4 are connected to digital uh, analog pin A4 and A5. So, that is it for the LCD and this is the most difficult part of the wiring I must say because if you miss or one or like misplace one or two cables if you put them in the wrong place then 
it will get a lot worse you won't understand what's going wrong so be very careful with wiring the LCD so keep this in mind and you once you are done with the wiring also just make check and make sure that the LCD is working and you have wired everything correctly. So one, that way we are done with the PIR sensor uh, sorry the LCD the PIR sem sensor is pretty simple it has 3 pins the VCC ground and the data cable. So the VCC will all uh, go to the 5 volts power supply and the ground will go to the ground and the data pin sorry the data pin will go to if A3 of the Arduino board analog pin 3 and as for the buzzer because we, are, we have run out of the digital pins on our Arduino so we will also connect it to analog pin 0 on the Arduino board and the other pin will go to our uh, the ground. So that is it with the wiring so over here I have a completed completely wired oh yeah and by the way I forgot the one other thing an important thing I must say the keypad itself so the keypad wiring the keypad is pretty simple so the keypad should be wired and it has 8 pins all the 8 pins should be connected starting from digital pin 2 to digital pin 9 so 2 to 9 that is 8 pins inclusive of 2 and 9. So this is the setup this is how it will look I know it looks kind of messy right now but this is the keypad and here we have the LCD display over here the Arduino the buzzer over here the potentiometer and the PIR sensor. So that is it for the wiring and uh, just make sure that you correct the wires correctly otherwise you will have pretty big issues coming up. Okay, so once we are done with the wiring, now we will look into the code. Okay, so I have a quick short surprise for you guys. So before we actually go into the coding, let me just give you a quick tour of the lab. The place where all the ideas and dreams come to reality. Hello everyone, my name is Diane and today I'm going to take you for a mini tour of the Assembly's office. So for those of you who don't know, we are located at N5 Tech and the office is basically where all the magic happens. This is where we brainstorm ideas for workshops, this is where we test them and prepare them just to make sure that they do work for the workshop. And for me the coolest part is that all our past creations and works can be seen here and so I'm going to show you them today. Welcome to the most colorful part of the office. In here you can see some of our 3D printed objects and right over there are the different kinds of 3D printers that we use. This little fellow right here is a dancing robot and does just that, it dances for you. <laughs> so this is another one of our creations. It's called a lithophane and we actually did a workshop on this during uh, Dubai Design Week. So basically all you have to do is print your image on a plastic and then if you shine a light on it, the image becomes more visible. So yeah, our 3D printed objects range from simple designs like the rings that you can see here to more intricate things like the Grand Canyon or a giant bug. On to the next section of the office, we're gonna check out some projects. This is called a Collar Thurman. We exhibited this in Jitex and using Arduino, it detects your hand motions and lights appear on the board depending on the intensity of that motion. It's a super cool project and I recommend you check out our Arduino Day video to learn more about it. 
One of our more popular creations is this robot that copies what your hand is doing. With the help of Leap Motion and some good old Arduino, just make any hand gesture and this robot hand will copy you. And here are some of the other projects that we've done over the years. On the next table, we have boxes. But they're not just some boxes, they're gadgets. Right here, we have an electronic kit, a smart home kit, um, a vision kit, we have the leap motion, some virtual reality glasses, and the Oculus Go, which is another VR headset. Right in this corner, we have the workstation. Now, I know it looks messy, but that's because this is where it gets done. And by it, I mean the wiring that you see in our hack workshops. Of course, it's always important to keep things organized. So we have separate drawers for different parts like breadboards, capacitors, LEDs, and other electrical parts. Finally, to stop our minds from being overworked, we have the chill zone, which is basically our foosball table. And that's our entire office. I hope you guys enjoyed this mini tour. Before you go, don't forget to follow us on our social media pages. It's at Make Smart Things for Instagram and Twitter, and it's the assembly for YouTube and Facebook. With that, I'll let you go back to the workshop. So open up your Arduino IDE and let's type the code. So I've already got the code written over here, and you can also download the code from the link in the description below. But I'll just anyways go through the code and explain it to you. So first things first, you need to include the required libraries for the LCD and the keypad. So the way you can do this is by either having hashtag include and the name of the library within the angular brackets or you can go to sketch, include libraries and include libraries from here. If you can't find the libraries uh, which you are looking for like the liquid crystal and the keypad over here, you can head on to manage libraries and there you can search for the libraries and install them. So let's say if you want to install keypad library, you search for it and once you find it, let's say if you want to download the key matrix for example, so we'll just click install and then it will show up in the list of our installed libraries when we go here. So that's that and then we over here we initialize the our LCD. So this is basically the name of the I mean this is basic initialization along with the name so we call it LCD and then these are the as a parameter it takes the pins that is connect that it is connected to on the Arduino board. So we have connected it to pin okay, digital pins 12, 11, A4, A5, 13 and 10. So that's that. And we'll create some variables that we'll need to initialize the keypad itself. So we'll create variables called rows and columns, which are by, as a byte type. And then we create an integer for the PIR sensor. So this basically is just holding the value of as to which pin the PIR sensor is connected to. We can also have instead of this, we can say hashtag define PIR and then we can give a3 so either way is fine then you create a character array of uh, rows with rows and columns of the keypad so if your keypad is let's say 3 by 3 not 4 by 4 so you will change these numbers over here and these as well so this is the same as well and finally when you come to this part this is where the actual initialization of the keypad takes place. So 
this is first you will need to type in make key map and then pass in the keys. So, in our case what are the keys? The keys are the, the array the key is the array which holds all the I mean the layout of the keypad and then uh, row pins is the, the pins inside the rows and the columns similarly the column pins and rows and columns. So, make sure that this array is correct because if you give it in a different way or maybe there is a problem in the wiring you will get different numbers based and you will be confused as to you press something else and you have got something else. And this is a variable called mask and it is basically to store the number of masks available. Now this um, our works our project today is not only to remind us of wearing a mask, but also to have a kind of a box or a container to hold the masks in it. So, this is why we ha have connected the keypad and everything with it. So, it will we will be able to input the number of masks that we have kept in the box and every time we are going out. So, it the system will assume that we take a mask from the from it and it will reduce the number of masks or gradually so by one and then when it reaches zero again it will ask you to add more masks and this process will go on and on. So, initially we are assuming that we do not have any masks and you have to put in the mask. So, the setup method is pretty simple uh, serial dot begin it is up to you if you want this or not, but it is good for uh, debugging your code like let us say if you have any error or if you or your keypad for example uh, is not printing in the correct keys or at least that is what you are assuming. So, you can check that using the serial monitor um, and then you want to start up your LCD which by saying LCD dot begin and then you want to make sure that your PIR sensor is set to input mode. Then we come to the main part of our code which is the loop method. So, inside the loop method we need to do several things. So, we have several different cases that we are looking for. So, we are first one is we are when there are no masks in the system and it basically asks the user to input the input new masks and the number of masks that he has entered. The next so, the we will go one by one. So, this is the first case when there are when there is no face mask. So, when there are no face masks uh, we created a temporary variable called temp and that will be 0. So, and then we have a while loop. So, this while loop will keep on running until the mask is 0. So, and we will clear LCD each time and set the position of the cursor we want it to be 0 0 and we want to print the number of masks along with how many ever masks are there inside and we want to tell the user that the maximum number of masks are allowed are 100. You can change this or you can remove this it is up, uh, up to you. So, then, then the, num, the user will input the number of face masks using the keypad. So, character key equals keypad dot get key. So, whatever the user enters will get stored in this variable called key. And then we will check if the key is pressed then uh, I so the serial dot print over here is to check that the key that you pressed is the correct one because I was having some trouble. So, that is why I printed here it is actually good to um, I mean visualize what key are you pressing. So, that is that. So, if the key pressed is 0 then the temporary variable is equal to temporary into 10 plus 0. So, this basically means like if the user presses enters 1 and 1. So, it means 11 and not 1 1 ok. I, I hope you understand it. So, that is that and if the user presses A and similar is the case for 1 to 9. So, and then if the user presses A then we decrement it. So, it is basically deleting one number back. So, if you press in 1 2 3 and then press A that means now the number is 12 and then you set the cursor to a new place and you print the 
now how you print the number of masks. So, you basic when you are saying printing temp that is the number of masks that you have entered right now. And if the key is D that means that you have confirmed that okay these many masks I am keeping it inside. So, D is basically for, for saying okay. So, or if you can in other words enter or that. So, if the number entered by the user is greater than 100 because we are limiting over here our system to a maximum of 100 then it will say mask equals minus 1 and we will see later in the code that mask equals minus 1 returns us to this uh, area over here which again asks us for to enter a number of mask and this process. And if the number of mask is less than 100 then the number of masks will get whatever the value is stored in the temporary variable and we will set the temporary variable back to 0. Now this is our second case where the number of masks are not 0. So, they are greater than 0 that means there are already some masks you have maybe uh, used this device before and you have already inserted the mask before in there and the masks are already there. So, again you will clear the LED set cursor and you will tie this is whatever you uh, have in here which says LCD dot print this is the actually this is actually what the LCD is going to print to you. So, it is going to say current amount and it will print the number of masks. So, current amount and then the number of masks that you have available. And this is the part where we are using the our PIR sensor. So, we will read the input from the PIR sensor and if the PIR sensor detects a person going outside or let us say the person passing by what it will do is it will check if uh, so it will check if we say if check is greater than or equal to 1 that means if the PIR sensor has detected a motion or change in motion and then we will play a tone on our buzzer. So, A0 is our is where the our buzzer is connected and this is basically the frequency on which the buzzer is playing and this is you can just go ahead and ignore these lines and we want to delay it for 2.5 seconds. So, it will the buzzer will beep and then after 2.5 seconds it will stop. And once we are done once it has sensed that a person is going outside it will check if the mask is greater than 1 it will decrement the number of masks because it assumes that most probably if you are going outside you will wear a mask and you will get a mask from the container. So, it needs to remove one mask from its uh, what you call database so that it knows one mask is less. And if the number of mask is equal to 1 then mask equals minus 2 then we will go you will understand why mask equals minus 2 because we have a method down here which I will explain to you. So, as I told earlier while mask equals minus 1 it says invalid number and I, I press any key to redo. So, mask equals minus 1 was the case over here. So, if you enter a number which is greater than 100 which is not accepted by our system if you enter that then the system will say that it is an invalid number and it will ask you to redo. So, that that process will continue again and if you go into the minus 2 state that means you are out of face mask. So, let us say if the number of mask remaining is 1 and the system detects a person moving by and obviously he will wear a mask. So, as a as a prompt he the system will tell the user inform the user that this is the last mask that you are wearing. So, enter new masks. So, that is what happens when the value of mask is minus 2. So, this is the code that we will use and let us plug it into our let us plug our Arduino board into it and see how it runs. So, now we have connected our setup to our laptop and uploaded the code in there. So, 
Now as you can see on the screen it says number of mask and maximum is 100. So what we need to do now is we need to grab our keypad and enter the number of masks that we want to enter. So let us say if you want to enter 55 mask we will press 5, 5 and then D. So now it says current amount is 55. So now it is turned on. So now whenever a person passes by or there is a change in uh, it detects a motion then it will decrement the number of masks in it. So let us try and do that. So, so I just moved the camera to detect it a change in motion and it decremented the number of decremented the number of masks available. So this will keep on repeating as uh, as many times as you pass through the door. So you can do so that way you will never again forget to wear a mask. So this is this and that is the buzzer that gives the loud sound. And now the problem lies is how do we arrange all this into a setup that looks neat and can be kept somewhere safe near the door. For arranging it into a proper looking box or kind of thing the ideas are limitless. I mean your imagine it is you it is only limited by your imagination how creative can you get. So one basic and very cheap and simple thing to do is you can have a cardboard cut out and you can place these inside those and that is really uh, again up to you how you want to make it and how you want to do the setup and arrange the masks in it and as well as the power supply and everything that is up to you. Another option could be to 3D print it. You can obviously go for the option if you have a 3D printer and 3D print a box that is custom made to hold the masks as well as these components that will be pretty cool and if any of you do that let me know in the comment section and sh share your uh, pictures with others as well. And you can have uh, or if you do not want any type of enclosure you can simply have it in you know some kind of big plastic container with the PIR sensor hanging out or you can simply hang them on a shelf and keep the PIR sensor over there. So the ideas are really limitless there is no limit to what you can do with that. So try and experiment with different things and let me know in the comment section if you face any difficulties or if you try it out and share your ideas uh, share your projects with us as well. So here is our final product. This is the final version of our today's session. So in the middle you can see the PIR sensor then the keypad and the LCD display on the left. So this is one way of making it I made it using carton box and then I added some uh, sticker to it. So you can use this idea or you can make your own from I mean this imag your imagination is the limit you can do anything uh, based on that. So and then as you can see there is a I made a lid on it all over it. So if you open the lid you have all the masks and the other electrical components inside and you can easily hang this on your wall right next to your door so that the next time you go outside you do not forget a mask. So that is it for today's session I hope you enjoyed it and do not forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos like this and if you like this video do give it a thumbs up and comment if you have any doubts or if you do make this project do leave a comment in the comment section below. Till next time see you bye.